What's up, everyone? My name is Adam Fangsrud. I'm an Ableton certified trainer, and I do a lot of teaching over Zoom. I'm actually a Windows PC user, and a lot of my students are as well. And the one problem that a lot of them have when they're trying to share sound from their DAW is uh, getting it to actually broadcast in high quality or even broadcast at all over Zoom. So I figured I'd put together this little video showing a quick and easy way to do that on Windows. Okay, it's not that quick or easy, but this will get the job done. All right, so we're going to be using a free piece of software called Voice Meter. It's a virtual mixer for Windows. This is what it looks like here. And we're going to use it to mix a microphone source with audio from our DAW. In my case, it's Ableton Live, but you know you could use Fruity Loops or whatever. Um, and then we're going to have all of that piping through Zoom in high quality stereo. All right, so let's get started. First of all, after you install Voice Meter and you open it up, you're going to see that it can mix hardware inputs, it can mix virtual inputs, and then it can have actual hardware outputs as well as virtual outputs. We're going to be using all of those. Um, so first of all, for your hardware input, what you need to do is set it to whatever your microphone source is. So in my case, my microphone is going through my audio interface. So I chose the line input on my audio box. I'm going through a channel strip, so it's actually using the line input. Now, the uh, WDM versus MME here is actually kind of important. Uh, MME is a much higher latency um, driver, so you're going to want to choose WDM for whatever your mic source might be. Now, if you're not going through an audio interface, that could be a headset, headset mic, a USB mic, even, God forbid, a webcam microphone, whatever it is, choose WDM and choose that microphone source. And there's a little glitch there as I selected it, but here we go. Now, um, I want to be able to have that go through to my hardware output. So one sort of side effect of this is you will hear yourself in your headphones. Now it'll be a small delay, but with WDM, that should be like 30 milliseconds or so. So it shouldn't be too distracting. If I were to mute, you wouldn't be able to hear me. So it's important to keep that on. Um, now the other uh, input that we're gonna be using is this virtual input right here. This is where we're gonna be sending audio from our DAW and also from Windows. If you wanted to like share a YouTube video or you know play something in your uh, media player, you know share some MP3, stream those, whatever, that's gonna be going through this virtual input. Now as far as the outputs are concerned, we're gonna actually need two outputs. So there's gonna be a virtual output that we're gonna be using for Zoom, but then the main out is one that I'm also gonna need because this is actually how I'm gonna hear myself as well as hear Ableton Live, Windows Audio, all that other stuff. So in this drop down here, I have my output set to, in my case, it's my little audio interface, the audio box ASIO driver, because that's what my headphones are plugged into. So you're just going to try to find whatever it is you have your headphones plugged into and choose that. Now, if it's not ASIO, well, ASIO is the best. Go ahead and see if you can find it as WDM. All right. Now I'm going to go into my DAW. Again, in my case, it's Ableton Live. I'll go into my preferences, control comma. <clears throat> and under audio, you're going to want to make sure that the driver uh, type is set to ASIO and your audio device is going to need to be set to the voice meter virtual ASIO. All right, now once I do that, it should be sending my audio through voice meter using that virtual input. So I'm going to hit play. Uh, this may be my finest beat, by the way. Um, I offer lessons if you want to learn how to do this. Uh, if I open voice meter. Oh, there's my microphone there on the left. Okay, so that's working. But hey, look at that. I've got a virtual input right here. That super fat beat is piping through it. And I can see that it is also outputting, first of all, to my headphones so I can hear it, hear myself. But it's also going out that virtual output. 
So make sure neither of these are muted, all right? Okay, so far, so good. All right, now we need to configure a few things in Windows to get Windows audio going through this virtual input as well. And then I'll open up Zoom and we'll take a look at how that needs to look. All right. So as far as Windows is concerned, uh, you can just right click on your volume icon and, and choose open sound settings. And under choose your output device, under the drop down, you're going to choose voice meter input. All right. Once I do that, I should be able to pipe audio from any of my standard Windows applications, web browser, whatever, through Zoom as well. So we have a little YouTube video here. I'll hit play. Come. Looks pretty good. Let's check voice meter. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so a few things uh, you should note about that. Um, because your Windows audio is now going through voice meter, if you quit voice meter, <laughs> suddenly you're not going to hear Windows. Um, so it's a good idea to be able to just kind of set and forget this stuff. So what I would suggest in voice meter under your menu, just set it to uh, automatically run on Windows startup so that voice meter will always be running in the background. And if you hate seeing it minimized, you can always tell it to minimize to the system tray as well, which will kind of reduce a little bit of visual clutter. All right, so at this point, we have audio from my microphone coming into voice meter. We have audio from Ableton Live coming into voice meter, and we also have Windows audio going into voice meter. So as long as we set up Zoom to uh, set voice meter as its source, it should get microphone, Ableton, and whatever else from Windows. So let's check out our Zoom settings now. So when I open up Zoom, I'll go to my settings and let's click audio. What we're going to do is a, a little counterintuitive. Now, if you are on a Mac you, and you're sharing your screen, you could just check a box that says share computer sound, and then Mac actually has a uh, Zoom actually has a core audio driver for Mac that you can select as your output source. And then voila, you have, you know, Ableton audio or whatever going into Zoom. What we're going to do here is a little bit hacky, but it's actually pretty sweet once it's working. We are going to have Zoom basically get all of its audio through its microphone input. And we'll never even have to check that share computer sound box. So under microphone, under this drop down, you want to make sure that the uh, microphone is set to the voice meter output. And sure enough, I can see I have peak meters and everything going. It's getting everything as a mic input through this voice meter. So, as far as Zoom is concerned now, my microphone is actually going to be uh, my, my real microphone. It's going to be the audio out of Ableton Live and anything coming through Windows. Now, there are some other settings you're going to need to, to set in Zoom to make sure that it's not doing, you know, crappy um, echo cancellation and gating and just weird processing to your sound uh, because it's assuming it's a mic source. So it's trying to, like, you know, make it sound better, which in our case would actually make things sound worse. So first of all, uh, make sure you do not have automatically adjust microphone volume checked. All right. You want a nice static volume so your levels aren't jumping around throughout your meeting. Suppress background noise. You can't turn it off, but just go ahead and set it to low. And then we have music and professional audio right here. So you want to check the box that says show in meeting option to enable original sound. You also want to check the box that says high fidelity music mode. Do not check echo cancellation. Otherwise, it's going to try to echo cancel your fat beats. And that's totally unacceptable. The other thing you want to make sure is checked is the stereo audio box right here. Otherwise, everything is going to be mono. All right. So just make sure that uh, your settings look kind of like mine. I'm on the latest version of Zoom as of September 8th, 2021. So, you know, in later versions of Zoom, these settings may look a little bit different, but 
more or less, they should be similar. You just want to be able to be able to original, enable original sound, put on high fidelity music mode, and turn on stereo audio. All right. So once all these settings are good, let's start a meeting. And there's just one more thing we're going to need to set to make sure all of our um, sound and zoom is top notch. So I'll hit start. All right, now I have zoom. Um, and right here, you'll see that original sound is currently set to off. That's not a good thing. That means it's still trying to do all its crazy microphone-y echo cancellation stuff. So I'm going to hit this drop down right here. And um, I want to see it says select a microphone to always use original sound. I'll just check this box here, the voice meter output. So now original sound has turned on and it will actually automatically turn on every single time you launch Zoom. So this is, you only have to do this once, all right? Now original sound is on, everything coming in through Zoom is gonna be from the microphone and, and all the DAW audio and everything should be really nice and clean and in stereo. Okay, one final thing I'm gonna tell you. Let's go back to voice meter. Because you have enabled original sound, Zoom is no longer going to try to do any fancy noise cancellation, echo cancellation, or anything on your microphone. Now, my microphone sounds good because I'm actually going through a channel strip with a built-in gate and all kinds of stuff, and it's EQ'd, so it's, it's ready to rock. If you're using a headset mic or a lower-quality microphone, uh, that's not going to be super good because all of your room noise and everything is going to be piping through. It's going to sound terrible. That's where this audibility knob in voice meter is going to be really handy. So the audibility control actually is a compressor and a gate. So what you can do if you're getting a bunch of weird background noise and stuff like that is just slowly turn up this audibility knob. And I'm not going to do it on mine because it'll start jacking with my, my mic. But you slowly turn it up until your background noise from your microphone is gated out. That way you'll be able to talk. People will be able to hear you clearly through your microphone. But when you're playing fat beats, Case in point, it's going to come through nice and clean, and they're not going to have to listen to your air conditioner. All right, so that is how you do it in Windows. Hopefully, a lot of people find this video useful. Um, again, I offer lessons in Ableton Live. Um, so if anybody wants to schedule something with me, you can check out my website, which is going to be in the video description. And uh, otherwise, yeah, happy Zooming.